Moving on to number seven, we take a trip to Ontario. This is Pepper North Stargazer, a diabolical blend of ghost pepper, scotch bonnets, and jalapenos. Snapped into focus by citrus, chipotle, and a touch of maple sweetness. Shout out to Canada, shout out to Maddie Matheson, shout out world peace. It's actually getting easier, I think, because now my lips are numb, I can't feel them. And my mouth is kind of numb, so it might be easier at this point. All right, and we're approaching this finish line too. They had two bites in them. That's on you. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. So, in addition to acting, you're someone who has a lot of hidden talents, a true Renaissance woman from husbandry to magic to accounting. Do you have a hack for how to uh, make a tattoo as painless as possible? Is there a way to do that? Mm hmm. Be drunk first. Um, people aren't really phased if they're. They've had a couple drinks. They also don't sit as still though, so it's you're like, can I take my jacket off? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh my god. Um <clears throat> I've never eaten anything so spicy in my life. So um that would be my tip. Just um be drunk beforehand. So? Actually, I think they say when you're at a tattoo shop, you can't get a tattoo if you've had any alcohol. I think it thins the blood. I, I shouldn't have said that. It's don't, don't try this. It's the wings talking. It's the wings talking. It's the wings. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Uh, in the lead up to the, your role in Focus, what's the most fascinating thing you learned from the gentleman thief, Apollo Robbins, about the art of pickpocketing? So Apollo Robbins, the gentleman thief, taught me how to be a pickpocket. Um, but he taught me a little too well. And then we got to set and we'd do the scene and they'd be like, well, you were meant to steal the watch. And I was like, I did. And they're like, but we didn't see it happen. And I was like, yeah, well, that's- That's the point. That's how he told me. And, um, and so then we had to kind of pivot the strategy so that we could actually see the pickpocketing as we went. But he, the, uh, the interesting things were just like what your brain actually blocks out. Like if you could touch someone, oh my God, in a particular place, um, he said it's like having a spotlight and you can make someone's brain only see what you're shining a spotlight on if they can do anything else over here. All right, this one, Stargazer, speaking of trippy. All right. These vegan wings are very... Spongy. But they're chewy as fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we had Shia LaBeouf on the show, mm -hmm. he gave us some advice for finding the right kind of vintage tea, unpredictably. He said that the key is to look for shape. That's true. Like some t-shirts are too boxy. It's usually how they fit in the, under the armpit, I feel like. You want them to be slimming. Where is Stargazer made? Canada. Always known for their hot sauce. Comes from Ontario. Yep. I call Ontario the Mexico of Canada. Yeah. How's that one? Because of their hot sauce. Not bad. Handling it. I'm okay. Doing great. We'll take a little sip. Go ahead. Oh, wait. So as an icon... Creeps up on you a little bit. ...with decades in the comedy game, it's only right with you here that we verify some of the folklore surrounding Will Ferrell. Okay. Is it true that the prosthetic testicles that you got from the set of Step Brothers, yes. your most treasured keepsake? One of them, definitely. Top yeah. five? My, definitely top one. <laughs> top two. I keep them in a little, like, trophy case. Like, you know, proper, uh, you'd see in a sports member, but like you put a baseball, like a signed baseball, like a plastic. Put it up on a pedestal. Exactly. Where it belongs. Yeah. Now it's not good. Is it true that you needed a little bit of liquid courage to be naked in front of Snoop Dogg in old school? No, I actually didn't. But in between takes, it took so long to get Snoop Dogg out of his trailer as he was smoking and playing video games that out of boredom, I just started drinking. Okay, this is the flaky one. Ghost pepper, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. I'm really impressing myself right now. <laughs> in the room, not a dry eye in the house. Oh yeah. 
Oh no. This is a rough one. This is really hard now. Huh. All right. Dom's coming in. She always uh, senses when somebody could use a fresh one. Thank Careful you. around your eyes, Pete. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna start crying. Killed that oat milk. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> so in the wake of Uncut Gems, there have been all these highlight videos best emerging. Best fucking movie ever. Excellent movie. Oh my God, best last 20 minutes of that movie's the best fucking cinema I've ever seen in my life. And then as a byproduct of that, there are all these highlight videos emerging of Adam Sandler playing basketball, crying, thinking about the end of Uncut Gems. Yeah, but you can't touch your face, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the rule? Well, there's no rules, but I just, I don't want to, I don't want to exacerbate the situation. This is where it is. Making me nervous. Oh no, this is where, this is a new one. Okay, cool. I'm just going to cry. <laughs> it's okay. That's what the people want. As someone who also plays pickup basketball from time to time, who is the most athletic comedian you've ever seen? Who? Sandler. Really? Sandler could fucking ball, dude. And he plays like dirty. Him and his boys. It's pretty great. He's like really, really good and competitive. He has like a, he'll back you down and like he'll really fucking like, at first you're like, this is cool, fuck. Uh, at first you're like, this is really cool. It's, I'm playing ball with Adam Sandler and then you're like, ow. You know, you really hurt me, man. Do you have a favorite memory from that day that you got to shag fly balls and do BP with your uh, MLB doppelganger, Christian Yelich? Dude, I got fucking yelled at. They didn't tell, holy shit, okay, they didn't tell the fucking team that I was coming. They only, uh, it was just a surprise with this nerdy little PR guy that I met. He was like, hey, we should surprise Christian. I was like, yeah, cool, dude, that'd be sick. You know, like, of course, I would love to do that. So I get there, they dress me up like them, they film me, they make this whole big thing, and I, and I just go out there during stretches, and I'm like, what's up, everybody? And they're all like, what the fuck? And then the batting coach goes, son, if you don't get the fuck off my fucking field in front of all the MBL, MOV players. Uh, and then I just like the rest of the game just sat next to the bench. <laughs> then after they were like, would you like to be Christian? I was like, I guess. And he was like, hey, man, I want to shag some fly balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, please. <laughs> You guys have tissues too? Because I'm about to be blown snot everywhere. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no, I need a box. <laughs> so you've done some monster collabs on your channel, everyone from Paris Hilton to Justin Bieber. Do you remember the first celebrity that you ever lured onto the vlog? We basically had to trick Tony Yeo into shooting the Hot Ones pilot. Oh yeah? Yeah. Um, it was Steve-O. I got him like my second video. I just ran right into him at a movie premiere. And I was like, can you please be in this? And he's like, sure. Um, but like my first like genuine person that like I was filming with a lot was Josh Peck. This goes in waves. Oh, it's going. Like you think you're fine. You kind of like ad adopted Josh. Yeah, now when Josh is like my you? friend, yeah. which is crazy. Your format is so free flowing. Thank you. I'm curious on the mechanics on how you get uh, some of these huge clout monsters. Like, when you're in a Tesla with Justin Bieber, are you guys secretly on like a movie set with 10 bodyguards there or? No, not at all. It's always like, it's always just me and the camera. But with Justin, yeah, like I, when I pulled up to his house to pick him up, he had literally like the militia right outside his house. Like it is a full on army. And then they follow you around and then they make sure you're okay. But we just went to UCLA and we pulled up in front of a sorority and we had people come in and we surprised them. What's the next wing? Are we not there yet? Would you like to be? <laughs> Sprint to the finish line. It's, this is, when I imagined this show, I thought it was gonna be like, like my eyes are gonna be watering. Like I thought it was gonna be like funny, but it's painful, it's pain. It's pain I'm experiencing. It's not like joy, joyous like, Discomfort. You know, I think, but it's because it's it's you in the chair. You know, the person is always experiencing that, but that is what's funny. Like right now, you're being very funny. I don't know if that's <laughs> the case.
Which one is this? Stargazer. Mm. What the fuck? <laughs> it's okay. You're good, right? I'm good if you're good. Bro. So the great New York versus Chicago pizza debate, it's raged endlessly on this show for many years. Yeah, Detroit pizza is like so much better, right? We've yet to talk about Detroit pizza, so I'm hoping to get some where insight from you. Where are the tissues at? Dom, Dom on tissues. Shout out to my homie Cliff. He makes like these homemade pizzas that are like fire. Jets pizza style. Deep dish, thank you. Appreciate that. And um. I can feel it in my nose. Well, yeah. be careful around your face. Don't touch your eyes. Thanks for telling me now. <laughs> Appreciate that. Have you picked a side in the great tug of war between American Coney Island and Lafayette? Lafayette has really came through for me, like on those clutch nights, like. Oh, it's burning a little bit for real still. Can you recommend a Detroit restaurant? One, if I just have $10 in my pocket. Yeah. And then another if I hit the jackpot over at the casino. Um. Shit is spicy. I've definitely like had weed named Stargazer and like, <laughs> sauce named Stargazer. <laughs> this is gonna be a freaking trip. I'm not I'm probably not gonna do too much. I assume this has gotta be the We're getting up to a serious level over here. Is it? Okay, I've been warned. Oh, I can feel it already. It's a smell. It's a smell. <clears throat> Is it true that Tom Cruise gave you an impromptu tour of his motorcycle hanger? Yeah, man, it was rad. Red Ducati, Tom Cruise pulls up in a red Ducati. I don't think he had a helmet, I think he, he pulled up, he had, there was, I was in a hangar. It was kind of like this, and like, yeah, there were air, he had air, like legit airplanes all parked in there. <sighs> he flies by on a red Ducati, just like in MI3. Like, and I hear it, and it's just like, rrr, 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 rrr. I'm like, wow, this guy's flying. So cool. I hope that's him. He doubles back around, it's Tom Cruise, and he pulls in, and he got, got off the bike, but then <laughs> I think he left the bike running a little bit because the, as soon as he went to get off it, he like swung his leg over and the bike kind of skitched forward and he went like, whoop, 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 and then stopped again. And so I walked forward and I was gonna shake his hand. He went to get off again and it revved up again and he went like, whoop, whoop, went a little further forward. <laughs> and like, starting on, <laughs> it was just, it was a funny moment. <clears throat> it's still super, super cool. <sighs> What's the backstory on breaking your hand in Neighbors? As I understand it, you had to get an emergency surgery to keep from derailing the film. <laughs> that's a bit of a buildup. Um, that's what Seth said. That's what Seth said? Yeah. All right, Seth said it. It's not built up. <laughs> Seth was like, oh, he broke his hand, and then, and then didn't go to the hospital and like save the movie, man. You said something about how actors will often look for excuses not to do their very easy job. Yes, that's, yeah. I'm like the opposite, man. I'm a workhorse. I like. It, Oh man, that's just it lingers. <laughs> that one's a lingerer, man. Just do wait. Ah, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Everyone's everybody's laughing right now. My nose be running. You! The stargazer here at number seven. The stargazer. Okay. Like you'll see stars when you eat this shit? Only one way to find out. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna go for a real sauce heavy part of this wing. It's getting real. So you hosted Saturday Night Live real. five There's ghost times. peppers. There's ghost peppers in that. And they come through. Yeah, they don't ghost. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is, this is, this is like the quick, this is like the quick 15 set. Like we're getting, I know what's happening right now and I can't stop it. You know what I mean? Like, I know what's about to happen to me right now. So get your memes ready. So you've hosted Saturday Night Live five times, including twice doing double serious. duty. Who do you think does the best Justin Timberlake impression? Is it Fallon, Matt Damon, or Andrew Garfield? Ooh. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Andrew Garfield. His had the most nuance. He caught some things that happened to me that are uncontrollable, um, where he sort of busts me up, and my face starts to contort a little, like it's probably gonna do in the next three wings. And then I read that you were really the one who stood by Dick in the Box. You know, even when Andy Samberg, even when everybody else around it was like a little weary about it, I heard that you were the one who was, who stood by his convictions That's and true. really made that happen. That's true. Well, here's the, 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 the story that people may not know about D and B, as I like to call it, <laughs> is, uh, oh, here comes the snot, bro. Um, uh, uh, oh, that's serious. That's serious. We have three more to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Do how ones they said. It'll be fine, they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You look fine. Um, um, the thing people don't know about, uh, the thing people don't know about D and a B mm -hmm. is Lauren was like, you know, we have to get you in with the Lonely Island guys. There's song and dance and it's comedy. And, and that's when I first met Andy and we, we hit it off immediately. So Wednesday comes around and we come up with nothing. So, uh, sorry, I will arrive at the point. This ghost pepper got me crazy right now. <laughs> okay. So. We were like, what if we came up with like a duo of guys who were still stuck in a time and a certain style with like the silk suits and the, you know, the herringbone chains and well and meticulously sculpted facial hair. Am I describing in sync? This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that we took so much from those groups. Holy shit. Wow, hot ones. Finally, Yorma says, well, what if we do the old, like, popcorn at the movies prank? And I was like, what? He goes, you know, you dick in the popcorn. And I was like, that sounds super creepy, bro. To which we then said, yeah, that's totally appropriate for two guys that are completely misled about what's appropriate, right? <laughs> Friday, we shoot all day, and we don't get done until like 3 a.m. on Saturday. And then the FCC shows up. They're like, you can't say dick on the air. I'm like, oh, right. But if you just bleep it, would we be fine? And she said, yeah, if you bleep it out, then, then it's fine. And I mean, I think the irony of that is I think the funnier version is the bleeped out version. Sometimes it works out that way. Right? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, I fully believe that, 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 I, that that idea would not have been seen all the way through if the bigwigs would have known what we were doing.